hopefully to put it into a bit of a phrase of what we do. We make websites make money. Um, do a number of different things. Um, make sure they're in the right order to advertise, advertise them. Make sure when we get people on there that they're doing the right things, you're selling the right stuff. So, whole plan is you have a website, if it's e-commerce, generate inquiries, whatever it's going to be, um, unless it's a complete family exercise, uh, it's there to make money. So, that's what we hope to, hope to be able to help um, a lot of local businesses with. Uh, with a lot of local clients, as well as some across the rest of the UK and Ireland. So, it's the self the way. So what I'm going to do is go through some AdWords tips. Now, this isn't going to be a case of AdWords is this, this is what an ad looks like and all that sort of thing. Um, it's wee bit, hopefully a wee bit more in depth than that. But if you do have any questions, just stick your hand up anytime, ask away. Um, I have the first question for you guys. Anybody using AdWords at the minute? Has used it in the past? Is planning on using it? Has heard of it? Has a computer? Brilliant. Go. Okay, um, a lot of people have different experiences with AdWords. Um, most people, whenever they try it themselves, Google sends them out a voucher they think brilliant, 75 quid free, and it generally will cost you a lot more than that because without knowing what you're doing, it's very, very simple to make mistakes. I don't know how to build websites, I don't know how to do accountancy, I don't know anything to do that. This sort of stuff I do know, so I'm not going to waste my money trying to do all those other things that I don't know about, so we just stick with these. So, what I'll do, uh, if you have any questions as I go through this, just stick your hand up because it's probably easier to do them while we, while we go. In AdWords, there's a measurement on your keywords, um, keywords being the things that you insert into Google in order to make an ad appear. So, for argument's sake, you, you have business yourself, sorry, David, what's your business? Uh, it's website design. Okay, so somebody sticks in, are you in Belfast or? Okay, somebody sticks in web design Belfast. Google, what they do is they look at that keyword, they then look at your website, they look at your competition, your ads and all that sort of thing, and they decide out of 10 what your quality score is based on that one word. If you have a high relevance, Google bases everything on relevance, they will give you a high quality score. If you don't have high relevance, they'll give you a low quality score. What relevance is, is basically, is it mentioned in your domain name? Is it mentioned in your copy? Is it mentioned, are you linked to other sites that do that sort of stuff? All those sort of things. Basically, the higher your quality score, the less you pay for clicks. Everybody's of the opinion that you, know, you can't compete with Tesco's, you can't compete with all these big multinationals. You absolutely can but it's about being smart on it. Pick the stuff that you have good scores on, that you compete well, drive down your cost, make yourself more competitive. The big companies can afford to just throw money at it, you know, and not worry about things like this and, and just pay through the nose because they have millions in their budgets. We would deal with companies with, you know, spending a grand a month to 50, 60 grand a month. And we deal with all the same premise. Get your quality score as high as you can and deliver value. Don't just deliver badly. You know, it's anybody who just sort of say, oh, I'll just pay for it. It doesn't make a good lead. It doesn't make a good, good position to be in. So where you find that, whenever you go into your keywords, if everybody's familiar with that, you go to keywords, and you can add a column in that then says quality score. You want that to be as close to 10 as you can. To put it into real terms, somebody with a quality score of 10 out of 10 can pay a tenth, 10% of what somebody with a quality score of 1 out of 10 will pay. So this idea of what, you know, the cost per click and everything, it's entirely in your hands what you're paying. Not many people actually pay attention to that. So the next one, hidden secret. You can actually, not only can you find out what ads you want to trigger, or what keywords you want to trigger ads, but through the, the platform you can also find out exactly what people are typing into Google in order to make your ads appear. So without getting really, really boring, it's enough that I have to deal with this every day, but I'll bore you guys for 20 minutes. Um, you tell Google what you want to appear for, and you have like keyword matches, phrase match, exact match, broad match, modifier, all that exciting stuff. You can really make a mistake here, and something to be really pay a lot of attention to. We had a, a client up the up in the northwest, um, sold car parts, spent three quarters of his budget between I think it was October to December, uh, appearing for advertisements for ladies' clutch bags, and he sold car parts. Imagine how annoyed he was whenever. We showed him this little page that appears in every single person's Google platform that tells you what people have actually typed in. So this big scary mechanic boy, you know, telling me all about these car parts and everything that I don't understand. And then I asked him, does he sell many women's gold wedding clutch bags? Wasn't entirely pleased. Pay attention to this at all times. Nobody does. You can save yourself 30 to 40 percent of your budget just in there. Pay attention to what you're being searched for. If it's something you don't like, get rid of it. The good thing about AdWords is it's entirely controllable. You don't like something up there, just bin it. Try something new. You know, it's you can always put things back in if you need to. 
enhanced campaigns. This is again kind of going a bit more in depth into what Google are doing at the minute. Google are basically trying to take as much control away from you as they can. Um, kind of following on from Barry's talk, they're a, they're a money making machine. All they're out there to do is make money. Don't think for one second they're there to make things easy for you or anything like that. Um, what Google are doing at the minute is actually changing the entire AdWords platform. The bit they want to focus on is basically that bit and pinned at the bottom. If you have an AdWords a campaign running at the moment, Google are automatically going to migrate that to their new platform in June, whether you do anything about it or not. Get it done before June, because what they will do at the moment, you have options like targeting, um, device targeting, you can target desktops, laptops, mobiles, all that sort of thing. You're not going to have an option come June. They're just going to target everything. Now, there are ways within the platform come June that you can control what you're, what you're doing. There's bidding strategies and, and different bits and bobs, but in order to give yourselves the most control, Look at it, research it, find out what you want to be on, when you want to be there, and, and get it sorted. Now, that's the, that's the bad bit, Google are just going to try to do that. What you'll be able to do um, in regard to reporting will be much more granular. You'll get a hell of a lot more information. The, the AdWords platform was always very kind of top level. You know, you could kind of say, oh, I got X amount of clicks, yada, yada, yada. With the enhanced campaign, you're going to see a lot more granular reporting. See a lot more in-depth information and in, you know in a nice small snapshot without even having to go into your analytics or anything like that. Um, you can decide to target different devices, you know, you can serve different ads to just to mobile. Um, it, it used to take a wee bit longer to do that in the old way. Um, contextual targeting, so you can be saying to people, right, I want this ad to appear on mobile, I want this ad to appear at this stage during the day. Um, for example, a, a sandwich shop is the one that always gets used. You might want your offer to only appear between half eleven and half two for lunches. You know, somebody's walking about Belfast in the Google sandwich shop Belfast. You can be sitting there at the top. You might want to bid a wee bit higher than that. All of this sort of stuff is now allowing you to have them. Cross device conversion. Anybody that is in any sort of digital marketing, this is this should be a bugbear. People generally these days sit with a mobile, tablet, desktop, whatever it is, research on one, buy on the other, research on two, buy on the third one, log in, do an account, log out, and you kind of lose a lot of a lot of conversion tracking. You know, has that person bought from their mobile, or have they bought from AdWords, or have they bought organically, or whatever it is? Google have somehow well, very how they've worked out how they can track. Somebody goes onto their mobile at lunchtime, and they go right, I want a web designer in Belfast, and they decide right, that's the boy I want to use. And then they go home, and they go onto their desktop because it's easier and bigger screen, all that sort of stuff, and they go on to your own website. We would have lost the sort of transparency of where they would have come from. Google are now decided that they can't track that come June. It's all going to be, well, it's, it'll be great for about 26% of people that are actually logged into a Google account. For everybody else, it won't work. That's how they're doing it. If you're logged into your AdWords, your analytics, Gmail, anything like that, you go cross device, they'll track it. So, But the good thing about it is, not to be too negative on it, it's given people a lot more transparency. You can, you can look at that data and say, I know that this person went on to their mobile at 9 o'clock this morning, they bought something at 12 o'clock that night. And they were the same person, this was the search, this is what resulted in. You get a lot more value back to what you're advertising. Um, and also tracking, you can do, there's a lot of different stuff um, in regard to phone call tracking that they're going to be doing, the cross device tracking. Basically, it's going to get a lot better, but it's going to get a lot worse before it does. There's a lot more work that's going to have to go in um, from a user point of view. And as people, you know, if you're going to be running your own AdWords campaigns or running for clients or anything like that, you need to be paying attention now to know the situation that you need to be in to get it right. Because come June, Google are just going to fire it over. And you have to remember, they're just out there to make money, so they're not going to do it the best for you. Um, so we kind of touched on this in the, the old and the enhanced stuff there. Device targeting, you'll see when you go onto your mobile, the, some of our clients are hitting like 40% of their traffic is going through mobile at the moment. To ignore mobile is just madness. You know, you can speak to your web company or whatever about you know optimized pages or whatever way you want to do it. But through ads, you can make it as easy as somebody not even having to visit your site. They can hit a button from an ad and call you. You need to be using this sort of stuff for mobile. It's what your your client expects. And you can schedule your ads to appear at different times. You know, are people using their mobiles between midnight and five in the morning? <coughs> Possibly not, unless you're like a nightclub or something like that. So you can schedule when you want to be there. Tell Google, I want to be clicked for this search at this time. You know, it can be that granular. Um, you can bid on different amounts and all that sort of stuff. Mobile specific ads. Anybody that's run a, an AdWords campaign before will know they represent differently in the top and down the side. They look a wee bit different, longer at the top. Kind of fatter than myself down the side. Um, you want the 
you want your ads to look right. If they don't look right, people won't read them. You know, people are lazy on the web. They kind of just go, oh, I don't see the things that jump out at me. That's the, the clutch guy. His ad didn't say, we sell wedding clutch bags. It said, we're mechanics and we sell clutch kits. People are lazy. If your ad doesn't represent properly, give the right information, people will just bugger off. They, they won't bother. So, good idea to pay attention to that. Ad extensions. Um, top ads in Google, you will see the all time some wee blue lines below those, and it's generally kind of a, a more refined search on what you've already looked for. So for argument's sake, we'll do clutch, uh, or clutches again. So I might have an ad that says, folks buy car clutches for all German cars, something like that. You can use the things called site links to refine your search even further. And what you're doing by doing that is actually giving the, the client exactly what they want, putting them through via the page that addresses exactly their issue, and therefore you're increasing your chance of conversion. So, for that one, I'd be selling uh, clutches for all German cars, and then in the site links, I can have those below saying Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes. They click a page for exactly their make and model of car, much, much higher chance of actually getting some money off them. Call extensions, we've kind of covered, you can click those, um, call the business straight away, and you can monitor those, track how many calls you've had, all that sort of stuff. Offer extensions, um, this is a way that you can actually display an offer, you know, 10% uh, off, 50% off, closing down sale, whatever it's going to be, um, directly in your ad. So that the person not only sees that they find what they want, but there's also an offer for it available at the same time. What you're trying to do through all of these things is increase the chance of conversion by refining the search. Give the client exactly what they want. Um, people are lazy, they don't want to do stuff. So try to remove all that from them. Uh, location extensions, again, for a, if it's going to be a physical premises, something like that, you, know, you can tell them where you are. If you're a hairdresser in Belfast, you, know, you can have your map sitting beside your, your ad and they can, they can walk directly to where you are, get directions, all that sort of stuff. Um, has anybody done an e-commerce website? Yeah. So you'll have a big thing for you would be the product extensions. You know, so you're appearing in Google Shopping as well. Um, different schools of thought that you could maybe have a 20% lift in sales just from using those. Um, a lot more people are going to it than they're hitting uh, refined by price, low to high, and as long as it's relevant, you know, going that way. Um, social extensions based on Barry's talk there. If anybody listened to the last one, they'll have Google Plus will appear in there. Um, but that's, that's where you'd be linking to your Google Plus circles and all those sort of funny things. Not a big one for social myself. Um, ad scheduling is, is something that's, in my opinion, vitally important. Google automatically puts your ads there 24 hours a day if you have the budget in order to do that. You'll get information um, through your analytics as to when your client buys from you. You know, if you've good tracking code in place and you're, you're monitoring your conversions. Your shop is only open a certain amount of hours. You know, so you're not going to leave the shop doors open if the staff are away home. This is exactly the same thing. If you're in a service industry where the, the interaction with the website is to pick up the phone and make an appointment, do you really want your ads to be appearing with your phone number when there's nobody in the office to take a call? All you're doing is you cost yourself money. They might not bother phoning the next day. You can pay attention to this. It can be as grand or as down to every 15 minutes. You can set it. I only want to be there 9 to 9.15 and then not again until 7 at night. You can set all that. Give your clients what they want. Make your budget go further as well. Instead of trying to be there all the time, be there, a great phrase, there for a long time, not a good time, should be the other way around. Um, so give, give your clients what they want. Just be sitting there whenever they actually want to do something with you. Analytics, does everybody use Google Analytics on their websites? Yeah, does anybody not? Good. Basically, the, I decide, before I actually bother to put this bit in, I, I just had written below that, just use it. The amount of information you'll get out of analytics will tell you more about your business than you know, especially especially online. You can create custom reports that are emailed to you on a certain day of the week, a certain one, once a month, once a year, whatever you want to do, giving you that snapshot of information so you're not having to spend a day just going through analytics and melting your own head. Um, make sure you link it to your AdWords. The, basically, if you don't tell Google that you're running an AdWords account on a, on a website, they don't know. So you have to link the two and make sure that the traffic is split out. That way you can see, I got this from non-paid traffic and I got this from paid. What you'll obviously see is the paid stuff performing so much better. Is that right, Barry? <coughs> um, make sure you're setting up goals. How many people have filled out your contact us form, hit your store locator? You know, because it's not just all about buying stuff online. If you have physical stores, um, say in Northern Ireland or the geography that you, you operate in, people might browse online, buy offline. You're never really going to know that unless you're providing a voucher code or you know something a bit more in depth like that. But you will see a lot of traffic maybe going to your store locator. You know, so if you're seeing a big increase in that, sales are increasing through the store. You can kind of, as long as you're not doing anything else major to drive that, you, you can kind of measure it back. And you always want to have a value to these things. 
you know, so it's, it's a good idea to sort of get, a, get an idea of what's happening. Um, E-commerce tracking is kind of an offshoot of, of the goals um, that I've just talked about. Basically it tells you how much money your website's making and how it's making it. It'll tell you what keyword people typed in, what ad they clicked on, what page they went to, what product they bought, how much it was. It does all the hard work for you. It tells you your average basket order, all that sort of stuff. The next one, um, multi-channel funnels. It is as exciting as it sounds. Um, it basically will tell you kind of just what I was saying previously. Somebody went on, clicked a paid ad, then they left, went back in organically, then they left, then they went in by your social extensions, then they left, then they went back in by mobile, then they left, then they went back in directly and bought something. Google used to only attribute that actual purchase to the last interaction on the website, which is generally, a lot of brands will go, oh, look at everybody finding me for my name. And it, it is a big thing for the last sort of click. What you need to work out is how they found you in the first place. If you're not doing anything else online or it's somebody outside the geography in which you, you operate, you have to sort of think, well, we only have a store in Belfast, right? somebody in Aberdeen buy from us. But it was actually because they typed in blue curtains and then they found the website and then they went away, did a bit of research, came back and found it by the name. That's how it happens. So you have to attribute that first thing to how people come in in the very, very first instance, be it Facebook, page, whatever it's going to be. Your multi-channel funnels will give you all of that. Um, down your web company to make sure that's all set up properly. Ad copy is a very important thing. A lot of people, again, covering the, the clutch thing, um, people don't read it. So you need to do something to stand out. Give them an offer, give them a price. I would be a big, big fan on e-commerce sites of giving a price. Because what you're basically doing is saying to the person, you find the product, this is the price. If you don't like it, don't cost me the money and click on my ad. Just go away, find it somewhere else. You know, you have to be that blatant. Um, Tell them what makes you different. Have you got a 50% off sale? Have you got buy one, get one free? You know, whatever it's going to be. Try to be original as well, because it's, it's the same stuff over and over again. Save 51%. We've 26 reviews and all this sort of stuff. People get bogged down in. Do something that makes you stand out. Because everybody does the other stuff. So try to do it a wee bit differently. Make it engaging. Believe it or not, in ads, I would be a big believer and you need to actually tell people what to do. Buy now, call now, click here, all that sort of stuff. Because people will read things and just go, Oh. And on to the next one. On it is. People are taking it from the web. Things and offers. Again, kind of going back to those um, promotional extensions. Tell people why they should click on you. You know, there's, if anybody in this room is offering something completely unique, it, it would be incredible. There's, none of us do anymore. You need to tell them why you're different. Tell them what your price is. Tell them you do free delivery. All of that sort of stuff, again, makes you stand out and hopefully they'll give you the money instead of somebody else. Go Mo, and nick this blatantly from Google. Um, mobile, um, kind of touched on it already, it's massive. Does anybody have a mobile website? A mobile optimized site, or, yeah. Basically, it has to be the way to go. More and more people are sitting with their iPhone, their Android, their Facebook phone, or whatever is coming out next, in front of the TV. I think the, the stats at the minute between, I think it's half seven in the evening to half nine, there's more people sitting on a phone than there are on a tablet or a PC. So if you want to rule out 50 odd percent of your market, don't bother doing this, but I would be a big believer and it needs to be done. Make sure that the experience is nice. Don't just sort of think of a desktop site where you rake a detail on it, I'll fire it up there, because it won't work. People will bounce and they'll cost you money from a paid search point of view. Do all the, there's, a, there's actually a brilliant resource that Google have, just google.com forward slash gomo, I think it is, or gomo. Um, but it tells you all the, all the good practices that you should be doing, and all the boxes to tick, and, and it'll keep you in the right line, but really can't undervalue how big that's going to be. There's also a new thing actually, um, in mobile, uh, called a phablet. Have you heard of that yet? Kind of between a mobile and a tablet, there's now a phablet. So it's like there's seven inch ones. It's a bit ridiculous. Um, the big thing that I would encourage anybody to do is think differently when it comes to paid search. There are, Google made, I think it was $36 billion in the US um, in 2012. If you can imagine how many people are doing this, in order to make yourself stand out and do something differently, just think outside the box a wee bit. Um, and this is a, I'll just close with a, an example of a company that nobody will admit to have here in color, but.
for a competitor, but sure. Um, what that Alan Summers one is basically trying to do is say, right, nobody else is competing around terms like BA strike and recession and all that sort of stuff that's depressing as hell. So what Alan Summers did was said, right, we can then compete in a massively uncompetitive or no competition market, which meant they got a really low cost for every click that they were getting. Brilliant brand awareness, bit of crack. They got great coverage um, in periodicals, both online and offline. Um, 1.5 million impressions. Is that right? Something like that, wasn't it? 1.5 million, um, and it cost them like four and a half grand. So that, relatively to a company like Alan Summers, minuscule budget, massive, massive impact. And that happened, I think it was about a year ago, and you've still got people like me talking about it and showing everybody else. Maybe you'll tell somebody else, and we'll all end up buying dodgy stuff. Um, <laughs> so that, that's about it, folks. Um, completely appreciate it. It's maybe a bit more in-depth, um, or a bit deeper than some people might have wanted. But if you have any questions um, now or afterwards, um, please feel free. Can I ask any, any questions? If it was an Ann Summers talk, you could have undressed, I mean, addressed some of the suggestions. But I'm sure there are a few questions from the floor. Anybody? I'll ask one. Um, day of time targeting. Be ready.